strong and impressive trail specific lineup from Adidas is the Terex Speed Ultra, a light, fast trail running shoe built as an ultra distance racer. Combining boost technology in the heel with a light strike midsole and forefoot, the Speed Ultra has an 8mm drop, 26mm in the heel, 18mm in the forefoot for a poppy, responsive ride. Adidas are making waves in the trail running market for sure, but can the Speed Ultra go the distance and is it worth that hefty price tag? Let's find out in today's review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Darren and as suggested in the intro, we are reviewing the Adidas Terex Speed Ultra. That is such a mouthful. Why do these running shoe companies keep extending the names of their brands? Anyway, moving on, let's begin with disclaimer. I have bought these shoes with my own hard-earned cash. No one gets to see the review before you guys do, so it will be an honest one. And as with all my reviews, we will cover ride, comfort, fit, durability, outsole, pros, cons, and sum it all up with why you should or shouldn't buy this shoe. Let's begin with comfort, starting from front to back. Before we jump into the shoe itself, I have a wider fit foot. I tend to get on well with a Scott Super Track RC, not the 2.0 version where they made it narrower, but the original. I also quite like the Hoka shoes, as long as they're in a wide fit, narrower fit, again, I struggle with my toes. So that gives you an idea of the type of foot I have, and I have had no issues in the toe box with the Adidas Terex Speed Ultra. As you can see, it's quite wide there towards where your pinky toe will be and while it does taper off at the end I've not felt it on my toes at all. There's plenty of room in there for you to wiggle around um, and then it narrows in towards the midsole where it's got a gusseted tongue but it's only partially gusseted so it doesn't pull towards the toes it just wraps and hugs nicely around your arch. I found that really comfortable. The tongue itself is padded very strategically along where the lacing is, so I've had no rubbing whatsoever with that. Um, the only place where it could do with a bit more padding, in my opinion, is further up towards the top of the shoe. Just around the eyelets here, they've actually padded, to be fair, around there, but not on the eyelets. I have felt that rub a tiny bit on my ankle, um, but it's not caused me any issues. And I also rolled my ankle the other day as well, so um, that's also not helped. The heel counter, not even noticed it and that can only be a bonus and I have my own custom insoles in here they fit perfectly fine and they also don't affect the performance of that gusseted tongue the whole upper of the shoe just wraps around your foot and feels like you are one with the shoe I know this may sound like I'm talking off a textbook here trust me I rarely ever say that about a shoe for comfort, for me, this has to be a nine out of 10. And moving on to ride. So we have boost in the heel, and in the midsole forefoot, we have light strike, a new technology. Um, boost has been so popular with Adidas throughout most of their range. Everyone seems to love it. It's my first time using an Adidas shoe, and I really like the light strike. Um, I found it gives loads of return because I am a four foot runner, um, and the boost just seems to add that little bit of cushioning for when you do strike heel first. I would say though, if you are a predominant heel striker, I think this may be a bit unforgiving for you. It's such a poppy, responsive shoe. If you want to feel like you're one with the trail and get something back from your daily trainer or even have a fast, light, responsive racer, this is well worth the look in. I'm not quite so sure that it is an ultra shoe, but we'll come on to that a bit later in the review. Let's move on to the outsole. They've got that continental tire type grip. And to be honest, the lug depth is only two and a half mil. So that is really shallow. I haven't tried these on mud or really wet surfaces yet. I would put my hat on saying that any type of slippery mud, these will fail. These will excel on rocky, dry trails, um, and I'm actually gonna try them in the Three Peaks Fell Race in October, assuming it's not too wet. That is a real technical, rocky course, and that's the sort of ground that this is gonna excel on. It's got great sticky grip, and while, yes, the lug depth is really small, the pattern of the lugs 
and just how sticky that continental grip is, is going to work a treat. I tried this out in Dolby Forest um, just the other week and it was fantastic. That takes us nicely onto durability. Now I'm still quite early on in the shoe's life cycle, but this is a premium shoe. The price is premium, again we'll go on to that in just a minute, but you can tell the build quality is fantastic. There's so many overlays throughout the shoe and they've really taken into consideration the areas where the upper may break down. You've also got a really nice toe bumper there and yeah, I can't see this breaking down below three to 400 miles. I also think the Continental tire grip on the outsole is going to last quite some time as well. So while it's only two and a half mil lug depth, I'm not too worried about that. I've heard lots of other people say that the durability is fantastic as well, so I'm hoping that that's going to last. But we'll update you on the exact durability in a month or two's time when I've knocked up some more miles. Let's move on to fit. As mentioned, I'm a wide-footed runner and I went true to size in a UK 8.5. Absolutely no problems with that. The toe box has been cracking, plenty of room for my wiggly toes. The middle and the midsole tends to wrap around your foot nicely in the upper throughout the shoe it is a really good fit I would say it tries to be a precision fit without cramping up your toes I think if you look at the Speed Pro the soft ground all the other Adidas range they're quite a bit narrower in the heel and that is an issue for me these aren't I like to get my custom insoles in there and I've had absolutely no problem doing that and before we look at the pros and the cons we've got to talk about price Retail, £160 is a lot of money. I paid just shy of 130 I think, in the UK. Again, it's quite a lot. Now, if this shoe's going to go the distance durability-wise, then you could argue that's not a bad price to be paying for such a well-built shoe. But we'll have to see how it holds up. In terms of looks, I absolutely love it. I think Adidas has done a fantastic job of bringing their trail running shoe range into the 21st century, and it's a breath of fresh air. You can also get a pink and green colorway with this, which I think looks really sexy. Why have I got Hardwold 40 on there? Idiot. On to the pros of the Adidas Terex Speed Ultra. Ride. This is responsive, snappy, and it really does give you something back on the trail. It's feather light and it feels like your foot becomes one with the shoe. Comfort, it is so comfortable throughout from the toe box through to the middle and to the heel, as I've already mentioned three times now. Grip goes as a pro and a con for me. If we're looking at dry, rocky trails, this is a fantastic shoe. And last of all, looks. I just love a sexy looking shoe. But it can't all be PBs and FKTs. Let's go on to the cons. Price tag at £160 retail, that is hefty too hefty for me. And as I mentioned, grip, that falls into the cons as well, because if you're on muddy, slippery ground, you've got no chance with this thing. Coming up to winter, it's going to spend most of its time in the closet. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're on mainly rocky terrain and you've got a little bit of damp mud thrown in there, a bit of soil, it's probably not going to be a problem, but I'm talking about deep, slippery mud. And last of all, distance. I'm not a fan of the way they've marketed this shoe. Yes, Adidas, this is a deeper stack than you are used to selling. However, it's not an ultra distant shoe for me. Maybe for your elite international runners, of which are few and far between, but for your run of the mill runner like myself, I would struggle to take this beyond the 50k mark, I reckon. Um, you certainly wouldn't want to be doing it on a 50 miler to 100 miler. I just think that it's going to be too lightweight and not enough protection. And we'll round this review off with best use. To answer that, what am I going to use it for? Well, the Yorkshire Free Peaks is my next fell race, and I am seriously considering this shoe for that. If it's a dry day, those rocky technical descents are going to be fantastic in this shoe. I think anything from a distance of 5Ks up to marathon, maybe a 50K you'd be fine for. Anything over, I'm probably going to have to stay away from it, I think. And it's going to stay in the closet during winter. So to summarise, I really do like this shoe. It's snappy, it's responsive, it's fun. If you want to get out there, hit the trails hard and go fast, this is definitely the shoe for you. If you're wanting a lightweight responsive ride, it is a corker. 
I would just say if you're looking for your best new ultra shoe to go the distance, if you're a heavier runner as well, it might not be the ideal choice for you. Right guys, thank you so much for watching this review of the Adidas Terex Speed Ultra and thanks for sticking around till the end. If you like this sort of thing, subscribe, hit the like button, that helps me massively and if you've got any requests, hit me down in the comments. I will catch you with the next one. See you later.